thank the members of the United States Senate, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, for his leadership and steady resolve. I thank Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley for his wisdom and fairness. And I give special gratitude to Senators Rob Portman, Susan Collins, Joe Manchin, John Kyle, and Lindsey Graham. They are credit to the country and the Senate. I'll be forever grateful to each of them and to all the senators who carefully considered my nomination. That was the new Associate Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court, Brett Kavanaugh, thanking members of the Senate, including my next guest, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. Senator Graham, I said this to you last week, and I'll say it again tonight. I don't think this would have happened without you. Um, the moment where it was just organic for you was extraordinarily powerful in as much as it was righteous indignation at that moment. And the other thing I'd like to say, I don't think it would have happened. I, I watched the speech of Susan Collins, and I said this Friday night on this show. I think it was the best oh, Senate speech yes. I've ever seen. Yes. Methodically laying out the case with no influence yes. outside from anybody under enormous pressure. And I've heard every horrible thing said about this woman. And I'm thinking, where is their sense of decency and dignity if you lay out an intelligent case, but you just happen to disagree? <laughs> well, it's about outcomes for our friends on the left. There's nothing they won't do to maintain power. There's nothing they won't do to take it back when they lose it. Susan Collins represented the best in the country. She thought about what she did. She explained what she did, and she made a reasoned decision. The people on the other side were going to destroy Kavanaugh if we let him. To the extent that my intervention helped a good man who was being railroaded and humiliated, I'm pleased. And to President Trump, thank you for sticking by Brett. To Brett, thank you for having the courage to stay in there when a lot of people have quit. I'm forever grateful to both uh, Brett Kavanaugh and President Trump. What I see now um, in people, a level of energy and enthusiasm and just raw, we're yeah. not going to put up with this, that I think is ignited yes. around the country. I don't know the impact it will have on the country in 29 days, but considering that we see every two, four years and every confirmation these tactics, yeah. we can't reward this behavior because we'll just get a lot more of it. I think that's what Susan was understanding is that if she legitimized this process, God help the next person to be nominated for the Supreme Court. If we legitimize this process, the rule of law gave away to the mob rule. The Hirano standard is horrific. What was insulting is the way that the senator from Hawaii took everything we hold near and dear By the way, and threw it Senator, over you shouldn't be saying that. Like you should Kavanaugh. shut up and, and sit like down, Trump. she said. She said men should shut up and sit down. <laughs> Shut up, Senator, and sit yeah, down. The only thing that goes wrong, for me, too. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> and it probably right half the time. But the people of South Carolina gave me my voice, not the senator from Hawaii. And I, and I chose to use it in a fashion that I thought, uh, I said, I think, what a lot of people were thinking. And uh, Senator Collins gave the best explanation why a reasonable person would vote for Judge Kavanaugh. And we're going to take this to the ballot box. 29 days from now, you got a decision to make, America. Do you want to live in the world of Senator Hirano, where you're guilty and to prove an innocent because you're a Republican, uh, you don't have a presumption of innocence? Or do you want to live in the Susan Collins world where you'll actually be heard, listened to, and evaluated? You know, Senator, um, I've been in this game. I'm now starting my 23rd year at Fox tonight and 30 years on radio. Kind of a, a, I've been pretty lucky. I've, I've been waiting any minute for it all to come crashing down like uh, everyone else. Um, but Don't I will worry. say You're this. You're good to go. You're good to when go. When you <laughs> when you look at the progress we've made it as a country, I haven't heard one yeah. idea from the other side that will improve the lives of the people that matter most, right. the people in South Carolina and the people in the rest of this right. country yeah. that are seeing the economy boom, our security get uh, beefed up in ways we never imagined just two short years ago. Well, there's two issues in this election. Everything else has kind of gone by the wayside. Are you okay with what they did to Kavanaugh? Is this the America you want to pass on to your children? We want women to be heard and respected. Dr. Ford was heard. She was respectfully treated. But we also want a constitutional process that protects all of us, not just Republicans, not Democrats, but all of us. And here's the other question on the ballot. 
what do you have to lose? Well, I tell you what, if we lose, you got a lot to lose. You're going to have a smaller military, you're going to have a bigger government, you're going to have less money in your pocket. If they win, you're going to have a bunch of people who are organized around the idea of hating Trump. So I would say there's a lot to lose if you turn over power to my Democratic colleagues. Uh, there's a lot to lose in this election, and I hope you understand that. All right, Senator Lindsey Graham, um, I don't know if this would have happened without you. You did your, your, your constituency well, in South you. Carolina. You served them well. You served the country well. We are forever in your gratitude for that. Thank you, sir.